Hi, my name is Jason. I am a registered sleep disorders technician, registered polysomnographic technologist, RPSGT. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about today is uh, problems that people have with CPAP. Um, it's very common. If you have a problem using your CPAP, you're certainly in good company. Um, some of the problems, uh, it's usually not just one problem, which is what makes it kind of difficult to identify and it's helpful to speak with uh, um, someone who has a lot of experience in it, such as myself. I do it all the time. Um, one of the main problems is that, uh, and this is normal, it's not like your sleep, your sleep clinic is terrible. It's hard to get people or find a proper pressure all the time for everyone. So one of the problems can be that you're just simply on the wrong pressure. Um, the way to remedy this is you could either come in and have another all night uh, titration with CPAP, but a more a cost effective way to do it, a more reasonable way to do it, and more comfortable for you is to take home an all night, I'm sorry, an all night, and usually it's like a five night trial of an auto uh, titrating CPAP unit. So this is a machine that would usually be start at a set pressure, say five centimeters of water pressure, and based on your breathing, if you're if you're showing any uh, type of flow limitation to the to the computer components that are inside of this auto CPAP, it's going to increase, and it increases fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't know if you're asleep or not. It just assumes that when you turn the machine on that you're awake at the time. It's getting a baseline reading. Uh, then at, at some point after that, if you start to deviate from that and it shows flow limitation, it's going to increase. So a, a, tip, a patient at our, our lab would have uh, this for five nights. During those five nights, you're assuming they're going to sleep at some point with this thing on. Um, uh, some of the newer machines actually shoot little pings of air, like little puffs, and depending on the response time that it gets back, it can tell if it's a central apnea or an obstructive apnea, which is very valuable information if you have complex sleep apnea or Shane Stokes respiration. Check out my site further about those, those things if you don't know what those are. Um, one of the other things, and often this is another problem that we, we see with it is that uh, a person is just on the wrong type of mask. So, um, you know, most people start off with just a nasal mask. It's kind of your standard sedan, if we're talking about cars, just like the standard thing that people get. It's just a nasal mask that just fits right over the nose. So it's something like this, just a nasal mask. So your mouth is not covered. Um, <clears throat> if you're using one of these and you're finding that you're getting a dry mouth in the morning, you, you, you're, you're still tired, uh, people say maybe you're snoring, uh, you just don't feel quite as rested as you should, uh, you definitely want to investigate uh, two things. You can try heated humidity, you can try increasing the amount of humidity or the amount of heat to get more humidity. That'll keep your uh, sinuses clear, um, it'll keep them from getting congested and prevent you from opening your mouth to breathe, which is, it's like totally and <laughs> not working if you're using CPAP. If you open that up, it breaks the seal, and then so the pneumatic splint that's holding up your airway is is gone, it's compromised. So you wanna make sure that your mouth remains closed if you're using a nasal CPAP mask. So heated humidity will help. Um, if you are still waking up dry, uh, then you just have a, a mouth leaking problem, and um, you're gonna to have to use a full face mask. So that's a mask that's gonna come from here, cover up your nose, and come down over your mouth. Um, with that, it doesn't matter if you breathe through your mouth, the, the CPAP, the positive airway pressure that's holding up your airway is gonna remain intact and no problem. Um, you wanna make sure some people are on a ton of medications and that can actually be the cause of the dry mouth. Uh, so it's pretty tough to tell. <clears throat> some of the newer machines can actually calculate how much leak you have in the mask during the night, so if this leak value is above, say, 30, 30, you know, 30 to 40, the mask can compensate for no problem, and um, you should be all right. Anything higher than that, you know that it's, it's an issue. Uh, which brings me to another point. Um, the mask is sometimes just either uh, the wrong size of mask or uh, you're not putting it on right. So a lot of people don't get enough uh, instruction on how to put them on. So the idea is you want to go snug, not too tight. If you go too tight, it can actually cause leaking and it's going to cause you discomfort, uh, but not too loose. So I often get people that come in, they take them like right out of the package and it's just kind of like they let them, it's not quite that bad, but they'll let them, you know, just kind of tighten up a little bit and uh, it's like gaping holes on the side. 
well that's not creating a seal so that's not inflating your airway the way it needs to be um, if you have any air leaking around here excessive air if it's a little pinhole and just barely shooting out that's okay <clears throat> unless it's bothering you I do something about it but in general that's not a big deal you just want to make sure you have a nice seal around here uh, that is comfortable for you and uh, if, if your mask isn't comfortable but it fits well uh, just look at my reviews, my mask reviews. There are a ton of masks uh, out there. I personally would stick to the major manufacturers. I would go uh, ResMed first, um, Respronics second, and then uh, beyond that, you're probably on your own. Uh, Fisher Paykal makes a, a nice little mask called the Zest, but it's you know it's probably the best one they make. But uh, all in all, I think it's not not one of the best overall. It might be in the top ten. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, you have some options out there. Oftentimes uh, you need a multifaceted approach. And is it the uh, is it the, the pressure that's the problem or the mass that's the problem? And oftentimes it's both. And you kind of need to be patient and work through it all. Or uh, you know, or, or CPAP is very easy to get get frustrated with and, and stop using. But it really is going to benefit your health, and it's worth it to uh, work with your sleep center or work with your DME. The, the provider of your equipment and your doctor to make sure that you get the most out of CPAP. If you have any questions about any of this, I know this is wordy and very rambly because I just kind of turn on the camera and go, uh, contact me at freecpapadvice at gmail.com.